Linear algebra introduces a lot of new terms. And it's a new way of thinking about mathematics. For a lot of you, this is also going to be your first time having an introduction into mathematical proofs. Linear algebra tends to get pretty confusing very quickly. And so what we need to do is to understand the definitions and the theorems fully so that that will allow us to do the assignments and do the exams a lot easier. Hi, my name is Mac and I'll be your math tutor for today. And this is Linear Algebra 101. So this is part one of our Linear Algebra 101 series. And basically the focus of today, we're gonna to talk about Euclidean spaces, vectors, vector addition, and scalar multiplication. Let's get started. So our first topic is gonna to be Euclidean spaces, which is, has a short form of Rn. Now, Euclidean spaces is technically just a bunch of math jargon in my opinion, but it's important for us to understand this idea behind spaces in mathematics. A space in mathematics is a general term to basically describe the set of values a particular variable can have. For instance, from high school, you're used to seeing spaces like this. The natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and real numbers are all considered spaces. They restrict the set of values a certain one can be. For instance, if it's a natural number, it has to be one, two, three, etc. Integers can be the negative version of these, including zero. Rational numbers are any integer over themselves, and real numbers is a combination of rationals and irrational numbers. These are all spaces. So what a Euclidean space does is it extends the real numbers past one dimension. So for instance, Euclidean space for R2 would be x1 and x2 where they are both real numbers. A Euclidean space with three dimensions is R2, R3, which is x1, x2, and x3 where all of these are real numbers. And finally, a Euclidean space of n dimensions is x1 all the way to xn where each of these are real numbers. And normally written in this way where we write for all i in from 1 to n. Now that we've introduced Euclidean spaces, let's give its formal definition. So, for any positive integer n, the set of all elements of the form x1 to xn, where xi is an element of a real number, for all i between 1 and n, is called n-dimensional Euclidean space and is denoted Rn. All right, with Euclidean spaces out of the way, we can now jump into vectors. Let's look at the definition of a vector. A Euclidean vector, short formed vector, x, is said to have the points x1 to xn for some positive number n, where xi is an element of real numbers for all i from 1 to n, and is denoted x is an element, square brackets, x1, xn, and is an element of Rn. You'll find that the definition for a Euclidean space and a vector are almost identical to each other. And the reason is they have this almost cyclic or cycle definition to each other. So a vector basically says that it is an element of a Euclidean space. And the Euclidean space is the set of all of the vectors, creating this cyclic definition. And why in most textbooks and other references, you will see their definitions almost identical to each other. However, it's important when we start looking at linear algebra that we also understand geometrically what a vector is outside of its formal definition. So let's illustrate that. So normally, vectors in what you're used to are still these lines that exist. So in high school, you would see them as equations of the line. So in this example, I've done y equals 2x. Every time we move one unit to the right, we're going to move two units up. Similarly, if you were to describe the same line with a vector, you would have it as this, where the vector is 1, representing the number of units in the x direction, 
and two representing the number of units in the y direction. These both are illustrating the same line. However, vectors have a direction to them. And it is most often because vectors are also used to describe a path between two points. So a vector describing A to B is not necessarily the same as the vector describing B to A. But this gives us geometrically what a vector is describing. Amazing. Okay, so we've tackled Euclidean spaces and now we've tackled vectors. Now let's look at what kind of operations we can do with these vectors. So let's look at the formal definition of vector addition. Let x and y be two vectors in Rn. We define vector addition by the vector x plus the vector y is equal to a new vector where each element is the sum of the subsequent elements in x and in y. So the first element is x1 plus x plus y1 and the last element is xn plus yn. Okay, so let's go through an example of this. If I give you two vectors, the first vector x is 1, 2, and the second vector y is 1, 1, the addition of both of them is we're going to take this, the first element in both and add them together, and the second element in both and add them together to get a new vector, 2, 3. However, visually, what does this mean? Basically, if I were to take the first vector x and draw it, I would see I would end up at the point 1, 2 here. And when we add y to this, we're going to draw the vector after x, as if we're following the first path of x and then following the next path of y. And if we add 1 to both of these following here, we would end up with 2 and 3. So from the formal definition, it's very easy to see this addition here. But now our new vector of them summed together is going to be after taking both of the vectors together, this new one here. And that's how vector addition is done. And finally, we talk about scalar multiplication. So let's talk about its definition. Let x be a vector in Rn, and c be an element of the real numbers. We define scalar multiplication to be c times the vector x is equal to a new vector where each of the elements is multiplied by c. So the first element is cx1 and the last element is cxn. So let's go through an example of this. So if I have x being our usual 1, 2 example and c becoming negative 2, from the definition we're going to take the negative 2 and multiply it by each element here to get our final one which is negative 2 and negative 4. And visually, geometrically, what we see is that we're taking our x, flipping it using the negative, flipping the direction it goes, and then doubling how far it ends up going. That concludes part one of our Linear Algebra 101 series. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Mac. I've been your math tutor today, and I hope to see you in Linear Algebra 101 part two. Bye for now.